Why is it that two patients with identical cancers will respond differently to the same treatment? It's a question that Professor Mark Dawson first encountered while training as a haematologist. This could not be explained by looking at the cells down a microscope, by imaging the patient, or by any of our other conventional methods. And therefore, it really led me to want to pursue this question in greater detail, which is why I chose to train as a discovery scientist. Today, Professor Dawson is a leader in the field of cancer epigenetics. Epigenetics is the study of how cell activity can be modified by changing how the DNA sequence is read. Epigenetic changes turn genes on and off. Unlike genetic mutations, they can be reversed, offering a unique opportunity for therapeutic intervention. What we have learnt over the last few years is that cancers adapt without necessarily changing their genome. Professor Dawson's team investigates how cancers rewire their ability to express genes in order to evade treatment. They're also developing new drugs which can reverse epigenetic changes by targeting the proteins involved. Over the last decade, my research has helped identify exactly how these proteins control transcriptional regulation. We've defined the exact domains of these proteins that are amenable to therapeutically targeting. And then we have helped our industry partners develop, characterize, and start to implement small molecule drugs against these proteins. He says the epigenetic drugs themselves can't cure cancer, but by forcing cancer cells to make more predictable decisions, they can improve other therapies that kill cells, including conventional chemotherapy. This combination is far better than the sum of their parts. And here we are really starting to see meaningful outcomes that have changed the standard of care for many older patients with blood cancers, including acute myeloid leukaemia. To this day, Professor Dawson still sees cancer patients. He says being a clinician scientist puts him in a unique position of bridging the gap between clinical practice and cutting edge discovery science. It is really, really important for governments around the world to appreciate the fact that our discovery scientists are making the discoveries today, which will fuel therapies in the next decade. And it is that that needs to be supported right now. A message he intends to share widely as a fellow of the Australian Academy of Science.